Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a doo. Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm Erica. Today we're gonna chat with you about some video games from 1992. We've already talked about all of the games that are on the Nintendo Switch online service, but we're gonna to focus today on the ones that are not. We don't necessarily have a lot to say about all of these games, but these are the ones that I picked that I knew something about or seemed like important steps in video games. So first off, I mentioned that we had already talked about some of these games in some previous videos. Here's what we've talked about already. So that brings us to the games that are not on Nintendo Switch Online and we have not already talked about. The Saga series started on the Game Boy. Romina's played one or two of those and liked them well enough. Romancing Saga is the Saga games that are on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. I've only tried one of them. I've tried Romancing Saga 2. I didn't really love it. I did play this one. I have a memory of it. I remember it being very difficult and I know I didn't beat it because I tended to be like, I don't want to play Kirby right now. It's hard. I've played bits and pieces of it, but I've never played very much of it. But this is the introduction of Kirby. And so that's fun. He's a mainstay of gaming. I know that later Kirby games are actually like among the easiest Nintendo platformer games. I haven't played enough of this one to say much about it, but I imagine even this one, if you put this in front of somebody versus putting the very first Super Mario Brothers in front of somebody, I bet this would be easier. We just have have less practice with it. It's my guess. I don't know for sure. Another really important game for all of video game culture. This is a first person shooter, a 3D first person shooter originally made for computer systems. It was eventually ported to Super Nintendo, Jaguar, and other such things. This was one of the, if not the first, first person shooters in 3D. So I haven't played Wolfenstein 3D, but it's an important stepping stone for gaming. It does look pretty good for its time. Next for the Sega CD, we have... I've not played the Sega CD version of this game, but I'm playing this right now, Silver Story Complete, on the PlayStation. That's the game that I'm going to be reviewing next on my own. It's a fun game, but I'm gonna save a lot of my thoughts until we get to that review. Erica, did you ever get to play? I did. I had such nostalgia looking at this just now. It seems to be a theme for me that a lot of my younger game days were spent on my cousin's Super Nintendo. But this was one that I always loved to play, especially with the stickers, because you mm -hmm. could just put like billions and billions of stickers all in a trail and make fun patterns with it. But they had different backgrounds you could fill in and you could make your own stickers, which was kind of novel at the time, I think. And of course it was all the characters that we love. So I'm a Mario girl through and through. And I'm probably wrong about this, but this might've been my first experience using a mouse because mm. this was when they had a mouse available to hook up to the SNES, which was also like, what? It can't have actually been my first time with a mouse, but it would have been pretty Close. I sort of miss the days when all of the different home video game consoles had all these different peripherals, like a mouse or... The laser gun on the NES. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots of different guns that work for just specific games. The power pad for the NES was super fun. A few of the later consoles from a generation or two after this had keyboards for typing purposes. I remember specifically that this had the music maker as part of it. That was fun to play around with. This is what the US got as Mario 2. So this is a game that already existed in Japan as Toki Toki Panic, just reskinned with Mario characters, but for Japanese audiences instead of Western audiences. I don't know anything specifically about Dragon Quest V or if that's one of the good ones or not. I haven't played many Dragon Quests, so I can't speak too much about it. But they're always a big, important thing to talk about when it comes to RPGs. And without Dragon Quest, we would not have Final Fantasy, which is obviously my love. Speaking of Final Fantasy, 
This is intentionally an easy, very simple Final Fantasy game for Western audiences, sort of like baby's first RPG. A lot of the systems are very dumbed down. It's an easy game, apparently. I've never played it, but I've seen a lot of people talking about it. It's sort of generally not loved among most gamers, but I've heard some people talking recently about how, you know, we should give this game another look because it's not as bad as you think it is. I just don't have access to it currently. In 19 in arcades. Mortal Kombat was a big deal. It was incredibly graphic and violent, largely because the character sprites that you're using are actually photographs of actors. It looks very realistic because it is photographs of people digitized and simplified enough to fit on an arcade cabinet. This eventually obviously made it to home consoles and it's playable on basically every console ever. Oh, and this is also sort of groundbreaking in how much blood there is in this game. So if you compare it against Street Fighter, at least at this time, it was not nearly as gory in Street Fighter. Mortal Kombat was where the blood and gore was. My grandma got me this game for Christmas one year and I hadn't asked for it. She gave it to me for Super Nintendo and she's like, oh, I'd like to watch you play it. Well, I had played this game before at friends places. So I'm like, oh, okay, sure. So I quickly turn on the game, go into the options, turn off blood <laughs> to like make it as tame as possible. And she watched me play and she's like, oh, it's so violent. <laughs> I don't really like any fighting games, but this one in particular, this original first Mortal Kombat gets old to me pretty fast, even as fighting games go. So it's not really my favorite, but it's, you know, it's, a, it's important. It's one of the two huge powerhouses of fighting games. I mean, there are more fighting games that are important, but these are the, the two that I think of are Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. All right, next we've got a trio of video games for the Sega CD that are pretty interesting. In these games, you edit together existing clips while a song from one of these artists plays and you can like cut together your own music video. I've seen someone play it on a stream before. Which one did I watch? I think it was the Marky Mark one that I watched someone play a little bit of. It's supremely silly, but there are win and lose criteria. I think it's very telling that the three bands or artists that they made these games for did not remain popular for very long after this. I have a feeling this was another sort of dabble into that arena of expanding the gaming universe and trying to attract more girls because these were just super hot artists at the time and i i can totally imagine that if i were super into marky mark at age 10 which i was not i might have really begged my parents to get me a system just to get this game it's not a bad concept if you kind of think about it for musicians or for just fans of the artist that could potentially be a lot of fun but it it would probably also get old quickly this was only possible on a system like the Sega CD using discs instead of cartridges because you can hold so much more data on a disc than you can on a cartridge but even then it's still pretty limited on how much video and audio you can fit on these discs so the gameplay from what I could see from watching a stream is pretty limited there's only so many things you can do but it's using actual full motion video of the band in these games and that's pretty revolutionary for Sega CD or video gaming, home video gaming as a whole. A Maniac Mansion came to the NES in 1992, but it was actually an old computer game from 1987. I had this on NES and it was one of my favorites. It's a point and click adventure game where you play a teen boy and you get to pick two friends of his out of like eight or so to go with you to break into a mad scientist's mansion so you can save his girlfriend who has been abducted by the mad scientist. It's goofy, it's really colorful. There are a lot of silly jokes in it. One thing that I remember really loving about this game is the music. So each of the kids has their own soundtrack. And when you switch between characters to play as one kid or the other, you get to hear their music. And they're almost all really good. There are different paths to beating the game. The path forward to winning depends on which kids you've chosen to go with you. So for instance, instance, there's a broken telephone that one or two of the kids know how to fix. And if they fix the telephone, then you can call out and like 
get something delivered to help you win over one of the other people who live in the mansion to help like so they can help you take down the mad scientist at the end i've never beaten this game myself it's actually pretty difficult because it's also all timed if you don't do it in the right amount of time then the girlfriend is murdered actually i've watched full playthroughs of the game on youtube and it's a lot of fun if anyone wants to check that out i would recommend it so one thing that we forgot to talk about when we were talking about mortal kombat is how it was really important for getting ratings on games so that that game got an m for mature so that kids wouldn't play it another one of those games that was really important to getting ratings on the games is Night Trap is another game that uses full motion video. There are actors in it. There's a really cringy moment where one of the teen girls sings a song in it. But in the game, you play as someone watching security cameras on this house in which somebody's trying to break in and kidnap or kill people. And you have to use the various traps in the house to make all the teens living there survive. This game was seen as incredibly violent it's really not it's goofy it's more slapstick although the threat of violence is there i guess but this was one of the games that was considered so violent that it led to congress making the ratings board for video games obviously an important game if you have played any of the still being made Shin Megami Tensei games or any of the other games in that universe like Digital Devil Saga which is something that I've played but something that I've played even more is the Persona series so they all take place in, sort of in the same universe but they don't really interact with each other the Persona games are a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei games I've not played any of the Shin Megami Tensei games myself they look like they're too difficult but they all have the same concept as in Persona games it's an RPG where you're fighting demons or other otherworldly creatures and you have the opportunity to recruit them to fight alongside you. I've also not played this one. I've only played little bits and pieces of 1, 2, and 3, I believe. I will say that Mega Man 5, you know, it's part of this chain, obviously, of Mega Man stories that people accuse it of just kind of being a cash cow, but they kept making them because they were quite good games, and each one made little steps. Mega Man on Game Boy are totally different games. Like Mega Man 1 is a totally different game in, on the two systems. They're not even like ports of each other. It's just a brand new game. That makes the numbering very confusing, especially once you get to Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo, because then you've got Mega Man, the Game Boy Mega Man, and X all sort of happening at the same time for a little bit. The other fifth entry in a series that we have on this list is... Ramin and I have already made a review of this, so check out that. There's a link in the description. We were talking about Street Fighter earlier, but here's another version of Street Fighter 2. And I think this is the one that really rocketed the series into being super important, if I know my story. I think this was the one that was originally someone had tinkered with an arcade cabinet to make it run faster. And that modification that that person did became so popular that other people started to do that with their arcade machines. Finally, the creators of Street Fighter were like, all right, let's just actually make a game that runs that fast. And so they did. And Street Fighter 2 Turbo started showing up in arcades and then eventually made it to Super Nintendo and so on. And that became sort of the thumbprint for how these games worked moving forward, how fighting games in general worked moving forward from this with this faster speed for the most part. That's called listening to your fan base. Exactly. Speaking of Mega Man, we've got... Which, again, is a completely different game from Mega Man 3 on the Nintendo. Mega Man 3 is available on Switch Online now. It became available since we made our review of the Switch Online games. If anyone wants to check that out, we've not reviewed it, but it's available on Switch Online. All right, that's all the games that we want to talk about. We have somewhat of a game this time. This is not going to be competitive, obviously. I mean, I could get Finn to play. I did take note of the best-selling home systems and the best-selling video games of 1992. I'm not going to keep track of how many mistakes you make or anything like that. I just want to see if we can together sort of reason through stuff. So let's start with best-selling home systems. What do you think would be one of them? In 1992, Super yes. NES. Super NES was second on the list. Then the Game Boy was probably first. It was. Game Boy was huge. 
-hmm. Followed by one of the PCs because everybody was trying to have a, well, maybe the Mac. Dang it, you got all these computers. Yeah. Macintosh. Okay. That was number six. IBM PC. That was number five. The Nintendo can't, that's not my guess, but the Nintendo can't have been selling as well by this point. Number four for Game Gear. Game Gear was actually number nine. Yeah, it never did very well, did it? I don't not know much about it. The Compact computer. That was number eight. Think about the console wars. Mega Drive is part of the Sega universe? Yeah, that is the same thing as the Genesis. In different countries, they was called either the Mega Drive or the Genesis. That's a trick layup. Look at that. All right, Mega Drive Genesis number three. Yes, that's what that was. So the Super NES did outsell the Genesis, in this year at least. All right, Nintendo then. Yeah, that was number four. Uh, the other two are as important. The Master System, which is the prequel to the Genesis, and then this other kind of PC. Best-selling video games now. There are six of them, but two are tied for first and two are tied for fourth. I don't remember off the top of my head if this is by number of units sold or if this is by how much money they made. And this is all the systems together. Yes. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 has to be on there. That was number one. One of the oh. number ones. Super Mario Kart was probably next it was not next but it is one of the top it's one of the number fours mortal kombat no not mortal kombat it's not even on the list mm -mm. Wow. not not one of these top six okay super mario land two six golden coins no one of these for the game boy had to be big it must be kirby it's also not kirby street fighter 2 that's the other number one I feel like Mario Paint actually did pretty well. No, and I'm guessing it didn't because you had to buy so much other stuff with it. Yeah. Probably made it a little bit more expensive. Mega Man. No, not Mega Man. Please don't tell me it was Marky Mark. It was not Marky Mark. Final Fantasy V? That was the other number four. This was not even released in the U.S., so that tells you how many people in Japan bought this game. Oh, then Super Mario USA is probably on there. No, it's not. Wolfenstein? Nope. Well, I'm just throwing darts now. <laughs> okay, I can fill in the rest. The there number six was, where is it? Oh, I missed it. You probably would have gotten it. Rigged. You probably would have gotten it. <laughs> the game has been rigged. <laughs> that would have been one of my first guesses after Sonic. Yeah. And the other one that we're missing is Dragon Quest V. I think the interesting trends are with full motion video, possible in home systems now, not just on computers. So we can have like physical video of human beings acting in a game now. It doesn't become very popular really ever because it is too much of a drain and it sort of cuts back on how much control you have over the game. But it's interesting that we start to see that in home consoles. I think we had already seen that in computers for a year or two. Yeah, I remember two games on my original PS1 that used live action video. I can, I remember it very well. Terrible acting, obviously. And I think the other interesting thread here is the fighting games becoming a little bit more sophisticated and they become sort of like the must-have games for a lot of gamers. Oh, and and that also, we could talk about how the rating system on games in America became important because you sort of, for the most part, don't want to have a mature rating on your game because that means fewer people can buy it. Although I think for some developers, they almost kind of seek out that mature rating because then it's like the cool game that the teens want to get anyway. I remember it also being a little uh, confusing to especially parents because the ratings were totally different than movie ratings, which was hard enough for people to understand for a while. But, you know, then we get into the video games. And it's like, well, what does this even mean? It was very similar to the way an older generation feels estranged from something that a younger generation just totally gets. Like they didn't they didn't get what all the fuss was about, but they knew they didn't want violence being portrayed to their kids. So, like, how can we tell what's really violent and what's not right and there's always been this hand wringing about oh violence in video games is going to make children violent and that's for the most part not happened there are a couple fringe cases where people have been inspired by violent video games but they're incredibly rare that's about it for today thanks everybody for joining us please give this video a like if you liked it or please give it a pity like anyway if you didn't like it too this side is a video that youtube thinks you might like so check that out up there in the corner is the link to our channel 
we put out reviews, ramblings, rankings, reminiscences, and other things that start with R. Generally once a week or so, mostly about video games and music, but we touch on other media as well. And that should be about it. Thanks, everybody. Maintain your groovy selves.